Hey everybody, today I wanted to record a video specifically for any of you that might be struggling to find your place in the computing community. And if this isn't you, you're not feeling like you're struggling at this time, maybe this video will help you help somebody else. Now I've mentioned hackathons in some of my past videos. I may also have mentioned that I'm the faculty advisor for CU Hackett, which is Clemson University's hackathon club. Hackathons are great. A few weeks ago, I gave a short talk at CU Hackett and the CU Hackett organizers were kind enough to give me the footage so it's almost like you were at CU Hackett this year, minus all of the great experience stuff that everybody else got that was there. But seriously, you should join us next year. It was a lot of fun. So anyway, I'm gonna play that footage for you and then we can talk about it afterwards. Yeah, and so with that, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming, uh, welcoming CU Hackett's MVP and also our guest speaker for the day, Dr. Jacob Sorber. Hey, thanks, it's great to be here. Uh, I'm Dr. Sorber, they put it up there in case I forgot. Um, so uh, for those of you that don't know me, I teach computer science and engineering here at Clemson, and also uh, when I get the time on YouTube. And um, yeah, so I wanna tell you a little bit about what happened 18 years ago. 18 years ago, I got my first, uh, I got my first real programming job. Okay, it was really exciting. I was a senior in college, about the age of some of you. And it was, I can still remember how it felt. Somebody actually was willing to pay me to write code. It was really exciting, okay? But I also felt like an imposter, okay? I felt like I had sort of tricked my way into a club. And I was just waiting for them to figure out that it was a big mistake and they were gonna kick me out, right? I can see by the looks on your faces, everybody knows that feeling, right? Yeah, everyone knows how that feels. And so I want to tell you what happened. Well, so, so I worked for a company that made, we made radar sensors. Okay, so these are sensors that you probably, you've probably all seen on overpasses. Uh, they basically, they watch cars and trucks going down the roadway. Okay, so I didn't really work on the software for the sensor. I worked on uh, mostly, uh, did a little bit on the sensor, but mostly for data collection. And we took that data and we were predicting things about traffic. So we were trying to predict traffic patterns. Based on, uh, based on what we were seeing from the data. And that was really fun. Well, one day the CEO of the company came and he was really excited. Okay, so he, he sat down and he said, you guys, I made this big deal. We were a little startup, so of course we're trying to survive. Everybody didn't know if we would be alive a year from then. So it was really exciting. He had made a deal with this, this local uh, TV station. They were going to take our traffic analytics and our data and they wanted to put it on the news. Okay, they wanted to actually show on the news, you know, these, these predictions, the stuff we were working on, and we were really excited, but there was a catch. And that was this TV station that we were working for, our big new client, didn't have a news show. And it turns out that our CEO had not only sold our data and our analytics, he had actually sold them a news show. He had told them that we were gonna build this software that was gonna make it really easy for a really small crew to take all of these different video feeds, and news sources from around the country and put together a news show and that was gonna be, it was, it was a great idea, but it didn't exist. And he was like, oh, by the way, I sold this thing, you got a couple months to build it. So you can imagine, all the developers are looking around the room, going, what, Who, who's gonna build this thing? And uh, yeah, so, so at that moment, uh, while everyone's looking around, I did something crazy. See, in our, in our group, we had a bunch of people that were really good at databases and we had a bunch of people that were really good at machine learning and signal processing. We didn't have anybody that had done GUIs. We didn't have anyone that had done desktop applications. And so that's why everyone's looking at each other. And so in all of this, I volunteered. So I'm the, I'm the student. I was like the last guy that should have done this, but I had just finished operating systems and I had finished networks and I had played around a little with the Windows API and you know, what could go wrong, right? Like how bad? You know, in, in retrospect, it's terrifying. But, so the point is, is that I was, I was probably the least qualified person on the team to do this. Um, I felt like an imposter, but why not? Um, in the end, so long story short, uh, I, I ended up building this, building this tool. And I got a lot of help from my team. It was a really great experience. And in the end, a few months later, when I, I actually, I slept on a cot at the TV station while they produced the first news show and it went off and it was great. And I remember walking out of there and, and something had changed inside of me. So I couldn't tell you when it started, but I felt like I belonged. I was a member of the club, right? 
I don't know why, but I knew, even though I knew that there was tons of stuff I didn't understand, there were a ton of things I didn't know, I could do cool stuff. And that cool stuff could have an impact. It made it on the news, okay? So that is what I love about hackathons, okay? I love to be here. I love being the faculty advisor for CU Hackett. I love to see that you're all gathered here together. And it's not, you're not here because you passed some test. You're not here because you took a ton of classes. You're not here because you memorized all of the Linux man pages, although that's cool if you did, I guess. Um, I don't know, we should talk after. But you're here because you want to have fun, you want to be part of a community, and you want to do cool stuff. You want to build stuff. And, and so that, I'm, you know, that's what CU Hackett's all about. CU Hackett is about being a member of a team. It's about, it's about learning. And you know what? A lot of you, some of you are freshmen. Some of you, this is your first hackathon. Some of you, you haven't taken very many classes. There's a lot of things you don't know. And you know what? Who cares? Because you're going to build some cool stuff, right? You're going to have fun. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to work with a team, and you're going to have a great experience. And some of you have more experience. You know more. You may be mentors, or you may just, you'll be a mentor either way. If you, you, know, you know stuff that your team doesn't know, you have this opportunity to teach and to grow. So you hack it is about being a member of a community. It's about being a member of a team. It's about learning. It's about growing. And of course, racing the clock to build some cool stuff. OK? So welcome to Clemson University. I hope you learn a lot. I hope you have a great experience. I hope, I hope you teach a lot. But most of all, I hope when you leave here, I hope you feel like you're a member of a community. And I hope you realize that you have the ability right now to make an impact, to do cool stuff, and to change this world. So welcome. I'm excited to come here in 24 hours and see what you've all accomplished. And good luck and happy hacking. So when I planned this talk and in recent months, I've been thinking a lot about some of the struggles, some of the fears, and some of the frustrations that new students have when they come into the computing field. Recently, a friend started college, decided to study computer science, didn't have much prior computing experience, but had really great track record in math and science, and all indications were that she was gonna have a great time. She had always excelled in school, but within a semester, she had switched majors and decided that she just wasn't any good at this computing stuff. As a professor, I've seen this story happen hundreds of times. And every situation is different, but there are some common themes. So these freshmen come into their first computer science class, and it's new territory for them, but it's exciting, and they're willing to learn, and they're ready for a challenge. And that first instructor might be great, or maybe not so great, depending on where they go and who they get. And sorry, not much I can do about that. But then class gets going and things start to get challenging. Like I mentioned in a recent video, learning computer science is like learning a foreign language. It's like teaching your brain to think in a new way. You're trying to understand and communicate with machines that are really stupid. And it's very different from what these students are used to. And they're sitting in class and they look around and they see a bunch of students that tinkered with this stuff in high school and they just seem to be light years ahead. They seem to have this uncanny ability to understand how the machine works. Programming seems effortless and some of them can be really obnoxious about it and they're just out there just trying to let everybody know just how much they know and just how awesome they are. And my freshman friends are sitting there and they're thinking. And I think I mentioned this, but they're used to excelling in their classes. They're used to being at the top of the class and this feels different and not the good kind of different. And maybe they start to wonder if they're just maybe not cut out for this new adventure that they started on. And sadly, in this situation, a lot of students opt to take a different path. If you or somebody you know is in this situation, let me share a few thoughts. First, in my life, I've never met anyone who was born a great computer programmer. I've known a lot of people who worked at it and became great at it. And after teaching students for a while now, I believe that anyone who's willing to work at it can become great at it. And that means you. Second, you're not that far behind. Those super confident kids in your class, they don't know as much as you think they do. In fact, they don't know as much as they think they do. Sometimes their comments don't make any sense to me either. Yeah, they have a head start, but if you work at it, you're gonna catch up way faster than you think you will. Third, everybody in this field has felt at times lost, intimidated, and overwhelmed. I have, the confident kids in your class have, everybody has. Some of us experienced it years ago, some of us are experiencing it right now. But we've all felt it. And I know you don't wanna feel like the dumb one asking the dumb questions, but please ask the question. There are a lot of us in this field who are willing to help, who are willing to answer those questions, and we want you to succeed. 
So to prove this, I decided while I was at the hackathon that I would go around and I would ask some of the organizers for the hackathon if they would share some of their experiences from their early days in the field and see what advice they have for people who might be struggling or who might be brand new to this field. Here's what they had to say. I remember my first semester that I was here at Clemson, I was very lost and very behind because I'd never done any programming. And I remember pulling aside my professor and I was like, listen, I don't know if this is for me. I don't think I'm good at this. And she was like, no, just, just wait, give it some time. You gotta, you know, rewire your brain. You've gotta, you gotta ease into it because this is something so different. And I remember, you know, going through the semester, I did okay, I passed. Uh, and that summer I went and did an internship that I got offered. And just the ability to be one-on-one -on -one with somebody who actually has been in programming for so long, has been programming since before I was born, just gave me the opportunity to, to learn and something clicked. When I was first getting started in computer science, Especially as like a woman in computer science, like my first class, there were two girls and I just think the thing that helped me the most was befriending people, was finding uh, peers who weren't necessarily acting like they were too good to talk to me, but finding real people who were also struggling and wanted to learn to be better together. Definitely not alone. It's really hard at first and it can be really overwhelming because you're taught like math and science and English from the time you're little. When you start learning computer science you're really just kind of thrown in the deep water. The art of Google. Computer science is like it's like 50% learning how to search. When I entered my undergrad program I hadn't had any programming at all so I entered and I was in classes with a lot of people who had had like programming in high school or they had did it on the side or something yeah, and I had it. no experience so for me it was it was a bit of a steep learning curve to get in that groove but just figuring out how to figure things out, like uh, figuring out how to not know something and the steps that you would take to find it. I feel like the first semester of computer science is always really scary, especially at the beginning, because they give you all this stuff that you don't really know what to do. But I've made it a priority for myself to get resources, like talk to TAs, go to office hours. And it is, it's a hard field. It's not like the easiest thing in the world. So, but you just like have to be dedicated to it and see like the vast, um, application of it. Five years down the line, what would you do with a computer science degree versus something else? Make use of those resources available to you, talk to the professors, and just see how you can apply the skills that you're learning beyond class assignments. It gets better, you just have to, you know, get past the those hard parts. If you just keep going at it, you're always getting better, as long as you're working on it, as long as you're practicing, you're studying. When I started out this year, I absolutely loved Java in high school. When we started learning C, it was absolutely awful. And I really wanted to drop out or, or change my major. But coming to CU Hackett especially, and just pushing through all the stuff I didn't want to do, wanted to get to the stuff that I wanted to do, which took like two months, maybe. Well, it made it all worth it. Learning a new language is always really hard for me because I'm doing bad, I'm, I'm bad at it and I don't like doing things I'm bad at. But when I reach that sense of accomplishment, it's just amazing. It's the best feeling in the world. It makes me really excited of all the things I have to look forward to just in four years and the rest of my career future because there's so much I could do. Like literally the opportunities are endless. That's the beauty of computer science that at the end of it, you feel there isn't a problem that you can be presented with that you won't be able to find the answer to. You might not know it immediately, but you'll be able to find the answer. And that's just, it's just very empowering. I was in the lab all the time, and I had a million questions that I thought were really stupid. I don't understand, why doesn't this work? Why do I need a semicolon here? What is this? How does this program work with other things? What are these different kinds of files? And I felt so silly when I was asking them. But it was really important that whenever I didn't understand something, I knew that it wasn't going to be something that I learned if I didn't ask the question. I had to ask the question in order to learn it. I actually did have a little bit of experience coming in, but I didn't really know anything. I thought I did. And then I got into 101 and I'm like, wow, I don't know anything. Knowing that that's what I wanted to do, like especially when things got hard or when things got confusing, or like even this past semester when I took a bunch of classes that were like really unenjoyable and I just had to get through them. Knowing that regardless of how hard it was or how many projects I have to write or how many lines of code I need to write, that computer science is something that I wanted to be doing, you know? Whether I was good at it or like not good at it or whether I was meant to do it or not meant to do it, I really didn't care about because I knew that it's what I wanted to do and so I was gonna make sure that I was successful at it. Everyone knows more than they think they do. 
unless you think you know everything, then you're just wrong. <laughs> so if you're really into cybersecurity, then dive in and try to learn cybersecurity. But the key is when you dive in and try to learn cybersecurity, inevitably you're gonna happen upon things that are more advanced than you're able to understand. Just without a doubt, in anything you go into. And so the key is, okay, figure out what what makes up that complicated topic and break it into smaller topics. If you don't understand one of those, pick one of them, keep kind of going back and going back, but then you've always got that finish line within grasp. You're always able to keep, keep going towards this goal and you're saying, oh, well right now I'm learning about pointers in C. Not a lot of fun. But what? at the end of it all, you don't like pointers. I don't C? like pointers and C. Oh. <laughs> but at the end of it, pointers and C are awesome, oh. everyone. But at the end of it all, you can go back and you can be like, "But look, I'm eventually going to be able to, you know, do penetration testing on this server. I'm eventually going to be able to, like, not actually hack into people, but like, ethically hack into things. You know, you'll have that end goal that's really cool to you, even if you have to learn the boring, not as fun, really hard stuff like pointers and C." You just gotta, gotta keep going. Not even like brute force it, you just gotta kinda roll with it. It's gonna be hard, you're not gonna understand everything, but it's so worth it when you do. And like eventually you will. Cause we've all made it this far and I, I didn't know anything when I like first started. I didn't know how to open a terminal and like I made it to this point where I love computer science and there's no other major I would even consider. But I was in that position too. And if you talk to most people, I think most people in computer science were at some point when you're just like, this is so over my head. I'm never gonna get there. One step at a time, like figure it out, talk to people. You gotta keep going, ask for help. And there you have it. I just love that I get to work with such a great group of students. They're so energized and inspiring. I would have loved to interview all the organizers for CU Hackett. I didn't get to all of you. Some of you were too busy running a hackathon, but I want you to all know that it's an honor to work with you and you inspire me. This video has been longer than my typical videos, but this is something I feel really strongly about. And I hope it's useful to a few of you out there who are struggling, who are frustrated, who are trying to find your place in this computing field and not really sure if there is a place for you, because there is. We need you here, we want you here, and I hope you continue to learn and continue to explore and continue to code. This is why I make these videos, is that I know this is a challenging field. It's also a field that I love and I wanna share it with you. And so I take topics that I find a lot of students struggling with and I'm trying to make it easier. I'm trying to make the path easier. If there's something else on this channel that I can help you with, please let me know. Because I want you to all succeed and thrive and YouTube helps me reach more students than I can reach in just my regular classes. So I hope you keep watching, subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos and I'll keep trying to make your journey easier. And if you know somebody who's struggling, who may be frustrated, please send this video along. Maybe it'll do some good. So thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.